Jackie. I'm so excited to share with you today one of my favorite products because it's so easy to make and that is wood covers for notebooks. You can personalize these and they make great gifts and they're actually really easy to make. Um, this file is in my Etsy shop, Wild Oak Designs 1, but if you are part of That Mom with a Laser, you may have snagged it for free when I was Designer of the Month last month. So hopefully you got a chance to get that. But either way, there are a lot of different files out there for these covers. And the problem is sometimes you can't find that exact notebook. Maybe I want to make a cover for one like this. It's a little smaller. So we have to be able to do some design work to be able to make that this cover be able to fit this notebook. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to show you how to design this out in um, Silhouette Business Edition. This is my favorite one that I use for designing. I'll also show you how to do it in Lightburn and hopefully Adobe Illustrator so that we can cover all the bases for everybody with some of the different softwares that they use. So I'll go through and I'm gonna show you how to create it for the smaller version, but of course it's the same process for any size notebook that you have. Stick with us. Okay, in order to do this project, you're going to need to get yourself some digital calipers. Um, this is what's gonna help us to get the right measurements so that we can create the notebook to actually fit the cover. So just a real quick showing you how to use them. Obviously you wanna hit the on button when you're ready to go. If this number doesn't say zero and it's closed, like sometimes I'll have it closed and it might say point zero 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 five or something like that. But if it doesn't say zero and it's in the closed position, you can hit this zero button, go ahead and zero it out so that it knows, okay, it's gonna be zero when it's in this closed position. Now we're gonna use two sides of the calipers, the front, which is what most people are used to using, it kind of pinches in from the outsides, but also for some of our measurements, like the measurement of these holes, we actually need to get it from the inside because if I go like this and I just kind of look from the outside, I can do that, but it's not going to give me the exact measurement. It's more of kind of a eyeballing it to see, is that the right size? Okay. Um, but the back of the calipers are made to go inside things. You just slide it in. And then as you slide, right here where my thumb is, as you slide this, it'll expand and you'll see. And then that will tell me the size. So a couple different measurements that you're gonna wanna take to be able to do your notebook is we are gonna wanna measure both the length and the width of these little squares where the spiral is gonna go into. Uh, it looks like a square, but sometimes it's a rectangle. This one actually is a rectangle. So you want to measure definitely the length and the width and write those numbers down. Another measurement you want to take is the distance from the top of the notebook to the first hole and the distance from the bottom of the notebook to the last hole because we need to know how much space before we start doing all of our holes and how much space should be left over at the end. And then the final measurement that you need is the distance from the edge to the hole. Now, if you want to, at the end, our software is actually going to do the work for us so that we get these spaced out correctly. But if you want as a double check, you can always measure the distance between the holes. So I could just use the front and pinch and write that number down. And I can use that to double check in the end. But because of the way that the software works, it's going to space it all out for us. And as long as we have the measurements from the top to the first one and the bottom to the last one, then we should be good as far as the spaces in between would be concerned. But you can take that extra measurement if you want. So again, the measurements you need to have are the measurements of your actual squares or rectangles. So just pick one and measure the length and the width. The measurement from the top to the start of the first one from the bottom to the edge of the last one, and then the measurement from the side to where the squares actually start. Write those measurements down and we're gonna take those and head over to our software. Okay, now that I have taken all those measurements, I'm ready to put them together and create my notebook file. So the first thing that I wanna do is I want to create my rectangle, which is gonna be actually my cover. So on the left-hand side, you'll see that you have a shape tool. And if you hover over any of these, it'll end up popping up and telling you what that tool is. 
Um, but your shape tool should be just a couple down. It may not be a rectangle, it could be a circle. It's really whatever you probably had it at before. But if you click there, then you can select which tool you want. Now, some people like to make the notebook covers with rounded edges, and this is what that would be. I just like to make it a regular rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the rectangle tool. And then I'm just gonna hold my button down, drag, and make a rectangle. Now it doesn't really matter if it has the actual measurements right now, because we'll go back in and we'll make sure that it has the correct measurements afterwards. It's a whole lot easier to type those in later on than it is to worry about dragging it and making it the correct size as you drag. So I've got my main rectangle, but I actually have another rectangle that I have to draw, and that's one of the little um, holes for where the spiral is gonna go through. Now I'm not gonna worry again about the size of this as I draw it, I'm just gonna do a little rectangle. And now I have both of the rectangles that I need to make my notebook cover. Now I'm ready to go ahead and use those measurements and make them the correct size. So I'm still on the rectangle tool. You can see over here on the left-hand toolbar, it's still a little bit darker gray colored, which means I have that selected. So I wanna make sure that I click off of that and click onto my selector tool. The selector tool is the top button, it's this little arrow. So I'm gonna click on my selector tool and that allows me to select any item that I have within my window. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select my big rectangle. Now the way you select it, you can either click right on it or you can hold the mouse button down and drag it over it. Either way, you'll see it's selected because it has these little square handles going all the way around it. Now I'm gonna change the size of this to match my actual cover size. On the right-hand side, we have another toolbar. And if you go down, you'll see one that has three bars going vertically. That's your transform panel. I'm gonna click on that because I wanna transform this rectangle. But I'm not worried about centering it or the alignment of where it's located. I'm worried about the size. So up here, the second option is scale. So I'm gonna click on that. And you'll see it tells me right now what size I have for my width and my height. And I'm gonna to go to my width first. And I know that the width of this one's gonna be five and one eighth, so which is 5.125. So I'm gonna type that in. And then I want my height to be seven. So I'm gonna type that in and I'm gonna hit enter. And now you'll see that my notebook cover is 51.25 by seven. Okay, so now I'm ready to size my little holes that the spiral goes through. So I'm gonna select this one. You'll see over here that it has the size that it's currently at, but I'm gonna change this. Now the size for my notebook cover that I measured, maybe different than yours, was point one, six, two, five. Now this program actually rounds it to the thousandth. So when I click off of that, you'll see it rounded it to 0.163. That's okay. Thousands are good enough for me. And I'm gonna change my height, which was 0.1665. I'm gonna hit enter. And there we go. So now this is the perfect size to fit my spiral. Okay, so I am going to need 20 of these. Remember we counted out and I happen to have 20 holes on my notebook. So I am going to select this and I want to make 20 of them. I can use copy paste, which is control V or sorry, control C for copy or command C, depending on which computer you're using. And to paste is control V or command V. But I'm a little bit lazy, so I like to just take a shortcut and do just control D, which I think of as duplicate, or command D if you're using a Mac. So I've duplicated it, so I've only had to hit one thing instead of two, and now I have two of them. Now I could just keep doing control D until I get 20, but I'm gonna go a little faster. I'm gonna select both of them now and control D, and now I've got four. Now I'm gonna select all four, and I'm gonna control D, and I can keep selecting greater units or I know that there's gonna be five sets of four here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select that and do control D five times. So now I have all 20 of my squares and I need their alignment to be correct going off of the edge and going off of the top and bottom. So now I'm gonna make something that I call a spacer. 
for my spacer, I'm basically going to mark out what space I need in between here and my first square or rectangle. So I'm going to come back to my rectangle tool, which is on that left hand side. I'm going to click on it and I don't have to be precise here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a long rectangle because I'm going to need a spacer on the side. I'm also going to need a spacer from where the top goes to the first one and a spacer from where the bottom goes to the first one. Now, just so that I don't get mixed up in the end and I know which pieces I'm gonna keep and which pieces I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna change my spacer color to green. That way at the end I know that I'm gonna delete everything that's green and all the red lines are things that I wanna keep because that's part of my file. So I'm gonna go back to my selector tool and I can do this one at a time or I can select all three of my spacers at the same time by clicking on the first one and either holding command or control down actually shift sorry I'm gonna hold shift down and I'm gonna select each of these and now I'm gonna come over to my right hand toolbar this is the line tool I want to change just the line color I don't want to fill it in I just want the line color different so I'm gonna select that line color I'm gonna choose the color option and I'm just gonna pick green all right now this makes it easy so in the end I can just get rid of my spacers and they're not gonna be a part of my file now I want my spacers to actually be lined up and I want them to be the right size. So I'm just gonna move that one over first and I'm gonna select my first one and I'm gonna go back over to my transform panel. And again, I'm going to size. Now remember I measured out how wide this had to be, this space between the edge of the notebook and the edge of the first rectangle. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna worry about the width. I don't really care what the height is right now. And I'm gonna change that width, which mine was 0 0.1675. And now I know this is the width of the space that I need. Now I'm gonna change my top spacer. So I'm gonna select that. And this one is actually the height that I need from the top of the notebook to the first one. And when I measured that out, make sure you select height and not width, it was 0.2335. And then my bottom space, again, I'm gonna to go to my height, and my bottom space was 0.264. Okay, so I have all my spacers now, I just wanna make sure I have them lined up correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both my spacer and I'm gonna select my notebook. Now, I could just eyeball this, but you see how even when I eyeballed it, if I zoom in, it actually wasn't lined up correctly. So I'm gonna use my software to help me make sure that I have it lined up correctly instead of just going off of my eyeball. So I'm gonna select both this spacer and my notebook. So I can either hold the shift key down and click on both of them, or I can just drag the mouse over both of them to select both of them together. And I'm still right now in my transform panel. I'm not worried about size right now. I'm worried about the position. I want to change the alignment. So this time I'm gonna click on the alignment one and I'm gonna say I want them both aligned on the left edge. So I'll click that. And it may not look like it moved a whole lot, but it actually now is lined up perfectly with each other. Now I don't wanna ruin this alignment when I change the others, so I'm gonna group this together. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say group. That makes it so that no matter how I move this, it's gonna to stay together. Okay, now this one up here, I want it aligned perfectly at the top of this. Now again, I could eyeball it, and if you do eyeball it, that's fine, but I would recommend that you zoom all the way in so that you have it eyeballed a little bit better, like that. And I can do that and that's fine. Um, or you can align it across the top. Now the reason that I eyeballed it is, look, I made this one stick out a little bit on the top. So since these are grouped, if I had aligned this at the top, this would have bumped out just like this does. And I don't wanna do that. So I just went ahead and eyeballed it. And now I'm gonna group these two items together too. So I'm gonna select them, right click, group. And then I'm gonna come down to my bottom spacer. 
And again, I'm gonna align this with the bottom edge of the notebook cover, which is the red line. And then I'm gonna select those right-click group. Okay, now I have all of my spacers set. They're all grouped together, so no matter what I do, if I move this around, it's all gonna stay together. And now I'm ready to go ahead and align my 20 little squares. Now, if I sit here and I drag each one one at a time and figure out that space that we measured in between and I figure that out and I go and I try to create a spacer to put in between, it's gonna take me a really long time and I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna use my software and use some tricks here to make this a little bit easier. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna zoom all the way in as much as it will let me and I'm gonna take my very first one and I'm going to align it right in the corner. And I might move that up just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, then I'm gonna take my very last one and I'm gonna align that in the corner. Again, zoom all the way in. So now I've got my computer and it's gonna tell me exactly where my first one's supposed to go, exactly where my last one is supposed to go. Now we have to deal with all these little guys in between. So I'm gonna select all 20 of them. So I'm just gonna hold my mouse button down and I'm gonna drag. Now I don't wanna select the notebook. If I accidentally drag too far and grab that notebook, back off a little bit so that you only select all 20 or however many of the holes that you have for your notebook cover. Now we're gonna come over here and I'm still in my alignment tool. I want these all centered, so I'm gonna center them. Oop, that moved me off. Let me go ahead and move him back. Probably should have centered them before I dragged my first ones over, but let's go ahead and drag that one over. Okay, so now they are all centered with each other. And you can see I still have my top one lined up perfectly in the corner and I've got my bottom lined up perfectly in the corner. Now I'm gonna select them all again. And this time, I'm gonna use spacing. And what this does is it will evenly space out each of the items from the top to the bottom. So the only ones that you have to have actually in the correct spot are the top one and the bottom of them. The rest, one, the rest of them will space out evenly when you choose. Like, I want this spaced out even vertically. So go ahead and watch my squares as I select this. You'll see that they just all shift it up so that it now has an even space in between each one of these. And it's spaced out perfectly. Now, just so that I don't mess anything up, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of that, all of my little squares, and I'm going to group it. So I don't want to mess that up. And I'm going to get rid of my spacers. Now, since they're a different color, you could go ahead and throw this into Lightburn or whatever you're using, your Glowforge interface, and it's going to have it as a separate operation. And you can choose not to do that operation and just run the red lines, and that's fine. I just go ahead and delete them because really, in the end, I don't need them. So I ungrouped, so I right-clicked. I chose ungroup. Then I came, and I'm just going to select my spacers. That was still grouped. Let me ungroup again. Since I grouped it multiple times, you might have to ungroup it multiple times. And delete. All right, now I have my notebook cover and I'm gonna select the whole thing while I've got it in place. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna group, and I'm ready to go. So that's my front. If I wanna have a back too, then I can do that Control or Command D and duplicate it. And I'll have my front and my back and I'm ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna save it as to which notebook that I have it for. That way I remember later on when I'm running those notebooks, this is the notebook cover that I wanna use. And of course you can add your personalization, you can add any designs or any names or anything like that. So this is how you create it in Silhouette Studio. What I would suggest when I save this, because I'm using Business Edition, I'm going to save it as an SVG. So I'll do save as, and then down here, I'm gonna say SVG. Let's 
see. I'm going to call this my I just happen to have a bunch that are all the same colors and they're all the same style so I'm going to call this my navy notebook cover and I'm going to hit OK. What I would suggest is um, just to double check so far everything's worked great for me but you never know I usually will run my notebook covers the very first time I make one I'd rather run it with cardboard that way if there are any errors or mistakes that I need to go back and check on, then I haven't really wasted any material because cardboard is cheap. Every time I get a box from Amazon, I can just use one of those boxes and stick a piece of it in and then run it and it's free. It's better to do that and then catch anything than it is to run it on your actual material and happen to have an error. Now we did measure the spaces in between before. Um, if you want to, just to double check, you could do a little spacer square and then have the square in between there and then check to make sure everything lines up. Um, that's just a double check measure, which is why I had you measure it before, but I'm not gonna go through that with you. That's something that you can do on your own if you're interested in doing that. But since I know that I had my spacer on the left correct, I had my spacer at the top and the bottom correct, and then I used that spacing tool right here, it automatically evenly spaces it out. And your notebook has it evenly spaced out across the notebook as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this one and I will show you what I get. Okay, moment of truth time to see if all of our measurements paid off. And you can just see when you like hold it up, that looks spot on. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach. And there you have it. We have our notebook cover fit perfectly for our little five and an eighth by seven notebooks. And then that's the same thing that I did when I created this. I think it's like a six by eight ish type of notebook too. Hope this video helps. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll be happy to help you out. Bye guys.